So welcome everybody to uh, this week's session on NASA's Mission to Mars Student Challenge. I hope everyone is fine and I said looking forward to the, the session. Okay, so as always, it's myself, Sarah and Solomon here with you. <laughs> so what and have everybody we done? else too. Uh, yes, hello everybody. <laughs> okay, so what have we done so far? Remember the first week we learned about Mars. The second week we planned our mission. The third week or last week you designed your spacecraft or you looked at some of the ways in which you could design a spacecraft. So this week we have to launch the mission because otherwise we'll never get to Mars. So first of all, uh, I wanted to talk about some astronomy news uh, because Mars is very much in the news right now. And there are actually three missions all going to Mars around this time. This. So I don't know if anyone's uh, heard about this or seen this on the Internet or anything. So on the 9th of February, uh, a spacecraft from the, the UAE, United Arab Emirates, that went into orbit around Mars. So it successfully went into orbit. So this first picture on the left is actually an artist's impression. Uh, it's not an actual photo. And then the day after, the 10th of February, uh, a spacecraft from China also went into orbit around Mars. Uh, and this is a real photograph. So they had apparently kind of free flying probe and it took a photograph, that one in the middle. And then as we know, uh, next week, uh, on the 18th, the NASA rover, the Mars 2020 rover, or Perseverance as it's called, is due to land on Mars. So Mars is very busy right now. Um, does anybody know or have any ideas of why? Why are all these three missions all arriving at about the same time? Any ideas why that's happening? Maybe you can put it in chat and Solomon can, can find the answers. Are you there, Solomon? Solomon, have we lost you? Okay, let me look in the chat. Okay. Someone's saying each country wants to be the first to get on Mars. Uh, someone else is saying that's the point of intersection when they can leave Earth and arrive on Mars. Solomon has light off, so he's disappeared for a short while. Hopefully he'll come back soon. <laughs> so excuse me if um, I don't some always pick up all the messages in chat because it's a bit difficult for me sometimes to switch between the screen and the chat. OK, so someone in chat did say something which was uh, 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 more or less correct. Um, the point is, if you think about the orbits of Earth and Mars, you know, Earth is closer to the sun and Mars is further out and they go around the sun at different times. Um, so there's times when the Earth and Mars are very far apart and there's other times when they're closer. So, of course, uh, you want to launch your mission to Mars when Mars is closer so that you have a shorter uh, distance. Uh, shorter time of travel and it costs less in terms of, of fuel and all those sort of things. So there's uh, actually I should be showing you a little video a bit later that you'll you'll also see why. So that's why all these three missions all uh, launched around the same time because that was the best time to launch. Uh, and then they also land. They'll also be landing around the same time. Okay. So let me just say. As I said, because Solomon isn't here at the moment, um, let me go through a few of the slides and then I'll stop and ask for questions or comments because right now it's difficult for me to go to the chat uh, to see if there are any questions or comments. So let's keep all those for a, a little bit later, if you don't mind. So just a little bit here about the HOPE mission from UAE. Um, so this is the, their first interplanetary mission um, and it means they're only the fifth uh, kind of entity, if you like, to reach Mars. Mars is difficult to get to and many missions have failed. 
So if you can reach Mars, you've, you've done really well. Um, and you can see there was huge excitement, see all the crowds there, very excited about this mission. And I don't know if people know this very famous landmark in Dubai. It's a huge, very famous building. They lit it all up in red to celebrate the landing, or not the landing, sorry, the, the, the orbiting of, of Mars. Uh, and one thing that's very impressive is that all the people who worked on the mission are all from the Emirates. Um, so they used all um, local people. Maybe um, connection. Yes, can everyone please mute? Thank you. Um, so, so that means they're doing very well in training all their people to have the right skills uh, for this space sector, which is great. I mean, that's what every country needs to be doing. That's what we need to be doing as well. So the orbit is going to study the atmosphere of Mars. And then the China mission, that's very ambitious. They, they're starting off with a spacecraft that's in orbit. But then after a few months, they'll drop a lander onto the surface and inside the lander is a rover. So they've got all three, the orbiter, the lander and the rover. And uh, this picture on the left is a real photograph taken by the orbiter uh, before it went into orbit, actually. And then the picture on the right is an artist's impression of what the uh, rover will look like. So the orbiter is going to study the atmosphere and the surface of Mars and the rover will look at the rocks and look for water. And it's also got a special radar to analyze uh, the deeper layers of the, of the Martian surface. And then the third one, as we all know, is the Perseverance rover from NASA. And that, uh, the, the mission is to look for signs of ancient life. Um, and they're also going to take some samples of the rock and it's quite interesting that they're hoping that later, in, in quite a few years' time, there'll be another mission to Mars that will pick up those samples and bring them back to Earth uh, so that they can actually be, be analysed on Earth. And also, as we talked about last week, they're doing a technology demonstration. They're bringing a little uh, helicopter ingenuity to see if that will work. Now, the picture on the left here is the landing site. This area is called the Jezero Crater. So, so this is like this curve here is like one part of the, the, the edge of the crater. So if you look at this, uh, OK, this one you might have to unmute. So what, did, what do you think this looks like, this kind of curvy line here? Oh, sorry. <laughs> so somebody can unmute as it is, just to say what you think it looks like. Uh, OK, Aqua Home, you've raised your hand. A snake. Oh, it, look, it does look like a snake, yes. Um, anybody else? I think it looks like a seahorse. Looks like a? Seahorse. Did you say a seahorse? <laughs> okay, let's think about, does it look like something you might find on Earth? It looks no. like a dried up river valley. Okay. Okay, I like heard somebody. Um, uh, sorry. It looks like there was a river. It looks like there was a river in between them. Okay, so, I, I, I've heard a couple of people talk about a river or a riverbed. So yes, uh, when scientists look at pictures of Mars, they see features that you also get on Earth. So this looks just like uh, a riverbed, a dried up riverbed. And you know rivers when they get towards, usually towards the sea or sometimes into kind of a swamp, they fan out into what they call a delta. So the scientists believe this is what was once a river delta. Uh, now, of course, rivers are made of water. Where there's water, we know there can be life. So that is why they chose this area for the, the rover to land in, uh, because they think by analysing the, uh, the sediments, the, the rocks and the, the soil there, it's possible they could find signs of ancient life. So that's why they've gone there. OK, uh, now I don't know if this is this probably isn't that easy to see, but just as I said, the, the, the rover, Perseverance rover is landing on Thursday, this coming Thursday. So you really need to be to be uh, looking out to see if you hear any news about it or going online. They are having some special sessions for students so on the 16th so that's what tuesday at 5 15 there's a special session for high school june students 
um, on the same day at 8.30 for middle school students and then the next day, the 17th at 5.30 for elementary school students. So it will be some scientists talking about the mission and I think you have got a chance to ask questions. And then on the actual landing day, the 18th at 5.30, again, there'll be some special sessions for students. But the actual landing is going to be on the 18th, sometime after, for us, seven o'clock at night. Um, now, you can tune in live. If you just look up online, NASA TV or NASA YouTube, um, you'll, you'll get a live broadcast. But don't think that you're going to see the spacecraft coming down and landing because obviously, you know, the spacecraft hasn't landed. It hasn't got a camera to look at itself. Um, and also it normally takes some time before they get the photos from the rover. So what they normally show is like the mission control and people saying, oh, yes, you know, we're approaching the atmosphere and now, you know, we've gone through the atmosphere, the parachute has gone up and, uh, you know, the heat shield has gone and each time everyone's clapping and cheering, but we don't really see anything. So it might be better to wait till later or even the next day before they'll give like a press briefing and then they'll probably show the first um, uh, the, the, the first photographs, but that's Thursday the 18th. Okay, now someone asked a couple of weeks ago, sorry I forgot, how to see Mars in the night sky. So let me just do that and then I'll, I'll stop for maybe a few questions. So this is a screenshot taken from um, uh, 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 using a software called Stellarium. Hold on a minute, sorry, let me just let some people in from the waiting room. Okay, so I think Solomon should be back with us and I've made you host Solomon. Okay, thank you. Sir. Okay, so yeah, so this is a screenshot from a, a software called Stellarium, which you can download for free. Uh, and there is also a web version, I think. So it shows you the night sky from wherever you are. Now, the, the, this sort of line at the bottom here is the horizon. It's a bit um, distorted. It's a bit curved just so I could fit more in. But these letters um, I hope everyone knows what the letters are. What, do, what is the letter W standing for, do you think? West. West. Good, good. I hear people saying West. Yes. So these are your cardinal points. So this is basically saying if you look uh, West and this this picture was taken at about, um, I think it's around 7, 7.30 in the evening. So 7ish or 7.30 in the evening, if you go outside and look towards the west but it's still quite high if it's clear you may see mars this little red dot okay now uh, there may be more than one red dot these two things here are stars but they are actually slightly reddish they're called red giant stars so you might look up and think oh that's weird i can see three red things which one is mars so it should be the lower one okay and the good thing is if you look up on the uh, oh, what's happened to my screenshot? Okay, on the 18th, so the day that Perseverance lands, or hopefully lands, uh, the moon will be up and Mars will be close to the moon. So that's an easy way to look for it. So on Thursday the 18th, if you look outside and find the moon, close to it there should be a red dot and that red dot is Mars. And you can be thinking, wow, I'm looking at Mars and there's a rover that's, that's just landing there. So that's quite cool. Good. <sighs> okay, so now we're about to start on the actual activities. Um, Solomon, I don't know if there's any um, uh, comments or questions. I couldn't really see the comments or questions um, while you were off. So I don't know if you, there's anything that you think is urgent yeah, to so, attend um, to. <laughs> um, so we have a few questions. So I guess not really related to what you have that what would happen if Mars stops moving on its axis? Sorry, I can't, away from... I can't hear you very I mean, well. I mean, what, what would happen if... So let me try fixing. Can you hear me now? 
Yes. Okay. So the question says, what would happen if mass stops moving along its axis or moving away from it? You, you're very quiet. It's sort of coming and going. It's like you start off all right and then it goes really quiet and I can't hear you. What about now? Can you hear me? Yes, that's better. Okay. Um, so it says, um, what would happen if mass stops moving along its axis or moving away from its orbit? Um, that's from... I, I get, yeah. The sound is going. <laughs> I said I heard. What would happen if Mars stops moving something? Um, moving. Can yes. you hear me? Yes. Yeah, moving along its axis. Okay. So does that mean it's a slightly? Do you does the, do you mean if Mars stopped rotating on its axis? like the way the Earth rotates on its axis to give us day and night? Or do you mean Mars stops moving around the sun? I have to say that, I mean, it's an interesting question, but the thing is, it's why would that happen, is my answer. <laughs> um, I mean, Mars wouldn't stop moving in its orbit unless maybe something collided with it, but it would have to be something very big. To really move it from its orbit because little things collide all the time like little uh, you know space rocks asteroids and things and they just make a crater um so and then and then if something you know if a planet is spinning it it, it won't just stop spinning but if it did i mean nothing really if let's just say for some reason mars stopped spinning on its axis i mean it would still be there um it would it might make a difference to uh, things like the seasons on Mars, uh, because it is actually, it has seasons like Earth, it has a north and a south pole. So, yeah. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, I can now. Okay, yeah, so that's, that's really all. So you can go on, that's all. Uh, okay, okay, right. So it said we've got 10 minutes before the next session, so. Yeah. Uh, right. So what we're doing this week, as I said, so we've learned about our destination, we planned the mission, designed the spacecraft, and now we need to launch. Gun, gun, gun. So we need to think about two things. One is how do we get to Mars? And the second is how do rockets work? Okay. So this is a picture of the actual launch of the Mars 2020 rover. That's the rocket that it went on. Uh, and this is a picture of a gentleman called Robert Goddard, and he built the first liquid fuel rocket. So the first <laughs> rockets were things like, um, you know, almost just like fireworks, you know, you use gunpowder and things. But eventually they realized that if you use liquid fuel, uh, it's a lot more, a lot more efficient and effective. So as I said, during the session, you're going to make a, a simple rocket with a straw and paper. And then after the session, again, there's a whole lot of experiments you can do with your rocket design. And I'm also going to show you two other ways you can make other types of rockets. So how do we get to Mars? <laughs> so hopefully you're not going to try and get to Mars like that because oh, let me move this. I think this is in the way <laughs> because that's not a good way to try and get to Mars sitting on a rocket. So what I'm going to do is um, show, play a short video. So let's hear what NASA has to say about how do you get to Mars. How do you get to Mars? If you want to send a spacecraft all the way to Mars, first you'll need a fast rocket to escape the pull of Earth's gravity. The heavier your spacecraft, the more powerful your rocket needs to be to lift off. Next, make sure you launch at the right time. Mars and Earth orbit the Sun at different speeds and distances. Sometimes they're really far apart, and other times they come closer together. About every two years, the two planets are in perfect positions to get to Mars with the least amount of rocket fuel. That's important. The total trip is over 300 million miles. Finally, make sure your aim is right. You can't shoot for where Mars is at launch time. You have to aim for where it will be when you get there. It's a lot like how a quarterback passes a football. Also, you may need a few thrusts to correct your direction along the way so you don't miss Mars. If all goes well, 
you'll get to the red planet in about seven or eight months. Then, if you actually want to land on Mars, well, that's a whole other challenge. So there we go. So that video talked about um, what we were talking about before was, was the, the launch window. So finding the time when Earth and Mars are closer and that's when everybody launches and that's why the three missions are all getting to Mars around the same time. Okay, so now we're going to think a bit more about rockets. Uh, here's another little video. I uh, hope it'll work from inside the PowerPoint. I, I might stop it. I just want, want you to see the, the first part. I mean, I'm sure you all, you've all seen rockets take off before, but let's just remind ourselves. We just received confirmation that the, uh, the spacecraft are green for and go for launch. Okay. Nine, eight. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And liftoff of GRACE follow-on, continuing the legacy of the GRACE mission of tracking the movement of water across our planet. Okay. Could everyone see that? Could everyone see the rocket taking off? Yes, I could see. Okay. <laughs> Good. So, uh, now this might seem like a digression, but you'll see why I'm saying this. So we're going to talk about rockets. First, does any, uh, we want to know who this person is. So we're going to do a little quiz. So Solomon, you have to be looking in the chat. So this okay. person, is it A, Galileo Galilei? Is it B, Isaac Newton? Is it C, Albert Einstein? Or is it D, Johannes Kepler? So which one do you think it is? A, B, C or D? You can put your answers in the chat and Solomon, you can tell me how the, how the voting is uh, going. So and Danny says B, Annie says B, Katie says A, Galileo, Galileo. Now, Miri, Tristan, you should be careful. Um, Nicole says Newton. Um, let's see. B. Okay, who says B? Akuto says B. Um, Nicole B, B, B. Jan Kurt says B. Um, S, B, B says A. Jan Kurt and B, okay, already. Achidi says B, um, Nishura says D, Ani B, um, Zarin says B, Nishura D. Okay, okay. So for, <laughs> yeah. for time's sake, I think we've only got, we've got about one and a half minutes. So just remember when it goes off, we're going to go come back to, to, uh, uh, the, the part two and then we'll be doing the activity so let's see who was it yes it's isaac newton well done everybody who said b yeah. and i think maybe if i'd shown you this picture you may have got it more quickly someone sitting under an apple tree with an apple falling on their heads because that's what a lot of people know isaac newton for so he was a famous scientist but actually he did a lot of different things so yes, he formulated the law of gravity, which, you know, which supposedly he thought of when the apple fell on his head. Um, he also invented calculus, which is a type of maths, which you guys will probably do when you're a bit older. Uh, he also invented the reflector telescope, so a telescope that uses mirrors instead of lenses, or it uses mir mirrors and lenses instead of only lenses. And he also used to work in the Royal Mint, and he invented ways that you could stop counterfeiters from making uh, fake coins but you didn't know that then and also his he has three laws of motion which will be coming to but he was a bit of a strange guy and apparently he had a lot of rivalries and arguments with other scientists and when he was a lecturer at university his lectures were okay so what was i saying about newton so <laughs> he did all these amazing things obviously a very brilliant guy um but he was he was 
sort of very kind of bad tempered, had lots of rivalries and arguments with other scientists. And, and at some point he worked as a, as a university lecturer, lecturing in maths, I think. And some, apparently his lectures were so bad that sometimes no students turned up at all. Can you imagine? So just because you're brilliant doesn't mean you're good at telling people things. So, so that's Newton. Why are we talking about him? Okay. Um, oh, you know what? No, let me go back. So can anybody tell me, I remember you saw the video of the rocket taking off. So can anybody, does anyone want to tell me sort of what they saw happening or anything they know about how a rocket takes off, how it works or anything like that? Again, or maybe again, maybe put it in chat and Solomon can tell me what people are saying. So what, what did you see happening in the video of the rocket taking off and do you know how, how it works? How does a rocket take off? Solomon, are you there? Yes, yeah, sir, I'm here. Uh, okay. Are we not getting any comments? No, not yet. Not yet. All are keen people. I'm sure. Or you can just say, what is it you saw? What is it the thing you always see when you see a rocket take off? It's very, it's a very kind of exciting, impressive uh, moment. What, what, what is it you see happening? Even if you're not sure how it, how it works, what is it that you see happening? Yeah, so we have some comments now. Good. Um, so, Zarin says by burning fuel. Okay. Um, Achidi says there was a countdown from 10 to 0, and, they, and when they got to 0, the rocket took off and there was fire and smoke. Mm, yes. Um, Manvedra says the rocket is set force on the ground to take off. Okay. Aru says the rocket pushes. Um, Abba Aqua says the thrust from the rocket pushes the rocket upward until the force of the thrust is greater than the force of gravity so that the rocket is able to take off. Um, and Shira says, I saw that when it took off and the thing, um, sorry, and the thing holding it fell and mist appeared. Janma says, I love the way the smoke pops up like a cloud. Nico says, really? Janma says smoke mist. Um, it just looks satisfying. Yes. So that's what we have so far. Great, great, good. Yes. All the um, the observations are good. Yes, you you see all this kind of smoke or fire coming out. You see the support kind of falling away. Um, and then people are also talking about, yes, there's some kind of force or thrust that, that is 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 um, pushing down, and that's what pushes the rocket up we've got some really good answers thank you for all that so just wanted to bring in what so why was I talking about Newton so he came up with these laws of motion uh, I'm sure Solomon could tell us a lot about Newton's laws of motion but I'm just going to talk about one of them which is his third law of motion which kind of says for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction now I think when you first hear that it's a bit weird you kind of think what so, but if you look at certain examples, it makes more sense. So imagine Solomon is going out for a boat trip. So here he is, he's on a little boat, maybe on Lake Basumtri. I don't know if anyone's been to Lake Basumtri. And ima imagine. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> That's you, isn't it, Solomon? <laughs> you look silly. He looks hilarious. <laughs> oh my god. Look at the head. Oh, that is hilarious. Actually, he looks horrible. It's, oh, he looks horrible. Very horrible. Like very horrible. Very stick man. The worst. The worst. Yeah, that's true. My that is it. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> it's true. Okay, so let's mute again. It's just an example. So here's Solomon. He wants to go out for a boat trip. And the water looks so nice, he thinks, oh, I'm going to jump, I'm going to dive off the side of the boat into the water. And I'm sure you can imagine if that was you, as you push 
to jump off, you imagine that the boat will push away. So as you push in one direction to dive off, the boat goes back in the opposite direction. So your action of diving off the boat causes a reaction of the boat to go in the opposite direction. So that, and that is basically Newton's third law. And that is actually how rockets work. So there's an action, which is the, the, the thrust of the engine and the fuel pushing down, and that's what pushes the rocket to go up. And you can also see it, oh, I'll have to stop screen sharing. Okay. Uh, you can see it in very simple examples. I've got a balloon. So I'm blowing up the balloon. So now, if I hold the balloon, um, I'm trying to do. A, I'm trying to be clever here. Now, I'm not going to let go of the balloon, but I'm going to um, slightly loosen the neck, and I've got some things in my hand. So when I let go of the neck, let's see if it works. Oh, okay, it didn't work. <laughs> oh, I don't know if you can see that. <laughs> okay, but I'm sure you can imagine you've done this when you blow up a balloon. And when you let the air out, you can feel the air on your hand. So the air is coming out of the balloon. Oh, Solomon went off. Let me let him in. <laughs> now, this time, so here's my balloon. I've blown it up. Um, so if I let go of the balloon, what's going to happen? What will happen when I let go of the balloon? Oh, so I think Solomon is having a problem. He keeps disappearing and coming back. Hold on. Okay, I can see some of the, the chat. It's, it's going to fly. It's going to release the air and fly in its own direction. Good. Yeah, so basically the air will come out this way and it will push the balloon off. So let's let it go. Woo! <laughs> And there it goes. <laughs> it might fall on your head. Uh, it could have done, but it didn't. So let me go back to my uh, slideshow. Okay. So <laughs> I can see you all like that picture of Solomon. So, so here's the law again. So. Okay, hold on, hold on. So here's the picture of the rocket. Here's the, the, the gases or the fuel coming out of the rocket. Um, so that's a force going down and that makes an equal and opposite he force looks, going he up. Like he looks like he's going to fall off the boat. He won't fall. <laughs> okay, so yes, yeah, so this also is how the rocket moves. So the, the fuel going down uh, produces a force and makes the rocket go up. That's how rockets work. So now the balloon, oh, I've lost my balloon. Let's get another balloon. You can do a little experiment um, by you. Okay, so you, you get a balloon and then you get, and if you can see, there's a piece of string. You tie a piece of string between two, like say two chairs and you put a, a straw. It can be just a piece of a straw. You thread that onto the string and then you tie it at the other end. Then you blow up the balloon, and while you're still holding it, you put a bit of tape to tape the straw to the balloon. And then when you let go, off goes the balloon. So now the string makes it go in a particular direction, whereas when I let go of my balloon, it kind of went up into the air and then it just went all over the place. So this is another type of model rocket you can make. Okay, um, another one is using what we call fizzy rockets. And for this one, you need, you know those um, uh, vitamin C tablets that you put in water? Sorry, excuse me. <coughs> yeah. And they go all fizzy. Yeah. So you need some of those, or there's also something called Alka-Seltzer, which is another fizzy sort of medicine. Uh, and you need the empty tube of the vitamin tablets and you need some warm water 
uh, and you need to do this somewhere where it can be messy, so probably outside. So what you do is you fill the tube about a third full with warmish water, so make sure it's not too hot. Uh, you know, I don't want people to hurt themselves. And then you take two of the tablets and you break them and you can put them into the lid. Now, the reason you do that is because you want all the tablets to go into the water quickly. So, so once you put the tablets there, you quickly put the lid on the tube, turn the tube upside down and put it onto the ground or onto a table or something. And can you use the baking soda instead of the vitamin C tablets? Hang on a minute, let me just show you what happens. So here's my little video. There you go. Mm. Five, four, three. Oh, I only got to three. So there it goes. <laughs> so you can do that as well. If you do that. Pardon? You who did that experiment. Yes, it was me that did that experiment. I'm just looking to see if. Solomon, are you here? She has to turn that screen off. Okay, Solomon's not here at the moment. Anyway, okay. So again, excuse me if there's some comments or questions, I might not be able to see them. I think Solomon's having some problems with his connection. So we're going to go ahead and make the soda straw rocket. So uh, as I said, there's a template, but you don't need to use the template. All you need is a, a pencil, paper, scissors, and sellotape. So let me stop sharing so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so. So you need a piece of paper. I'll show you the size. Oh, what's my pencil? What's my pencil? Oh, here it is. So can you see my, I've got a pencil and I've got a piece of paper. So the piece of paper is approximately the same size as the pencil. It doesn't really matter that much. And basically what you're doing is you're going to roll the, the paper around the pencil to make a tube. So if your piece of paper is too narrow, you won't be able to roll it round. And if it's too wide, then you'll just end up rolling and rolling and rolling. So basically this is what you're doing, okay? I've rolled the paper around the pencil. Can everyone see that? That's what you need to be doing, if you haven't already. Okay. And then you need to fix it with some sellotape. Now, someone said earlier they didn't have sellotape. You can try using a bit of glue, but depending on the type of glue, it, it might mean you have to wait for a bit for it to um, dry. Depends on what kind of glue you've got. Ooh. Okay. So. Uh, is that like a glue stick? So, yeah, you can try it. Yeah. So I said, so you have a piece of paper, and then you roll it around the pencil. And then you have to tape it or glue it. Oh, can we mute please? If you're not asking a question. So I'm just going to put the sellotape on then I'll show you what I've done. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, okay. Here's some. Okay. And then what you do is the at the end, you know, a rocket has a normally has like a cone. So because the pen, remember the pencil is there. So you just kind of twist the end around the pencil about around the pointed end of the pencil. So you end up with kind of a 
a cone like that. So it's just a simple tube with a bit of a pointy end. And then you can put a bit of tape around that cone as well to keep it in place. Oh, so that one, if you haven't got tape, mm, well, I think it's still, it's still a bit of a cone shape. Okay. Now on the template, it actually also has fins. You know, it has some like triangular shapes that you cut and you put here. So you can also do that. But right now, because I, I, I think that will take a while if we try and do it right now, you don't have to add those. But the whole idea is once you know how to do this, you can make your own later and you can add the fins and you can decorate it and so on. Okay. So the idea is once you've done that, you take out the pencil and this is where you need your straw. So you put your straw in and then you can just blow to launch your rocket. Ta -da! Now I saw that somebody said I don't have a straw. The only thing I can think you can do is, um, is take a piece of paper and roll it to make a straw. Okay, I think my piece of paper is too small. It's only that you have to make sure you've rolled it tightly enough to fit inside your rocket. Which is a little bit tricky. But I think I think that's yeah, what you'll have to do if you don't have a straw. Hello, Solomon. We're making our rockets. Did you make your rocket, hey, Solomon? Yeah, I did. Oh. I can show it now. You can't, what did you say? You can't show it? Yes, now. Why not? <laughs> Are you sure you really made one? I hope you're not fibbing. I did. Um, I'm just far away from the office, that's why. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm just seeing if I can make a kind of paper straw. Where's my oh my rocket? Hold on, I have to go get my rocket. Oh, now my thing's home. home. My that's ear. that's really nice. Um, so I'm just looking at people showing their rockets, cool things. So I call aqua home. That's great. Um, So if you have made yours, you can just show it so that I can see and then perhaps talk about it. SSB, I can see yours too. Um, yeah, looking cool. Um, yes, you, yes. Oh, actually, oh, I, can't it. Um, I can see yours too. Mm. It looks a little bit bigger than Sarah's own. Um, okay. Yeah. So I think Sarah has talked about how it should be. So make sure that you can blow in there and it can fly, okay? So yeah, check your design. Who else? Let me see. So someone was saying um, that they, they didn't have a straw. I said you can roll a piece of paper to make a straw, but it is a bit tricky to get it, to be able to roll it thin enough to get inside. Uh, mine is a bit too thick. I'm sure I could do it, but it just, it takes, it's better if I have a proper desk to work on. So either that or you make your rocket a bit thicker. You know, maybe maybe roll your rocket around two pencils so it's a bit thicker. And then when you make your straw out of paper, it's more likely to fit. So I'm sure you can still yeah. do it. Yeah, I think they can also use um, a different kind of paper. Um, yeah, a different, maybe a harder one. Um, yeah, something like that. You mean for the rocket, you mean? Yes, yes. For the oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But what I'm saying is someone said they didn't have a straw to, to blow oh. it through. So I was saying if you, if you don't have a straw, you can just roll some paper, but it's quite difficult to roll it as thin as a normal straw. So maybe you can make your rocket a bit bigger and then, the, then your paper straw will fit in. Yes, yes. Great. Okay. So Good. you can turn your video on and then show what you have done, if you have done something. Yeah, great. Aru, I can see you. That's great. Um, let me see. Okay, see. I can see yours. From Palm Boys. Um, 
Have you done anything? Not to put you on the spot. Okay, I'm just asking. <laughs> um, no, I'm, I'm making you myself. Okay, great. Bosio doesn't want to do it. No idea. Bosio, come on. It should be fun. Um, let's see who else. Yes, sir, go on. If you have something to say, I'm just checking. Yeah, no, only that, um, yes, I mean, once you've made it, then the idea is you can do a lot of uh, variation. So, in fact, let me, let me go back to my slideshow. Um, so, you've made your rocket, then you can see how far you can get it to fly. So, start in one place in the, in the room and then blow your rocket and then you can actually measure it. So, if I, should, I should have said you need a, uh, a, you could use a tape measure. And if there's more than one of you in the house, maybe you can both make a rocket and see whose can go the furthest. Now, if you really want to do it scientifically, you should um, do maybe three or four or five flights and measure each time. And then you calculate the average, okay? Um, and then you always make sure that you always start from the same place and that you launch your rocket in the same way. So in other words, if, uh, you know, don't launch it once blowing down and then another time you launch it blowing up because then they won't be the same. Then I said you can add the fins and measure again. Does that make any difference? Um, another thing you can do is the make the nose cone a different uh, length. So you make another rocket and either make the cone at the top very small or much longer and see if that makes a difference. And then you can think of, you know, try, you can think of other things. What else do you think you could change about, about the design of your rocket that might make it uh, more efficient? Um, and, and even that you can think about, well, what, what is important? I, is it the distance that it goes? So do you want the rocket that goes the furthest or do you want to try launching the rocket and getting it to go to a particular place? So it's like the accuracy of where you launch it to. You, you can decide which one you think is most important and test for that, uh, you know, and then you can turn it around and see how you could make it do it the other way around. So it's a very simple rocket you've made, but there's all these different uh, like scientific experiments you can do with it. So any other, um, Solomon, any comments or any, I can see, I'm not showing all the, vid all the videos, so I can't see, I can see somebody, Aru, uh, blowing her rockets. <laughs> um, so Nicole says, you can use it as a, mon no, I can't read that. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I meant. Oh, you've gone. Oh, Solomon, you've muted yourself. Solomon, you've muted yourself. Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Um, so, well, I can't find, the name says, Bionic, I like your cut G. Okay. Now it says cut the top to be sharp. I think there were other comments, so um, that's that. And then you said Nicole says you can use it as something I can't mention with the fence. It says mustache. So I don't know if it's a reply to another comment um, earlier on. Yeah. So we don't have any, let's say, proper comments here. Okay. But most people are, I don't think. But, but from the video, from the videos, Solomon, it looked like some people have made their comment. I mean, sorry, made their rockets. Yes, yes, they have. Okay. Yeah. That's good. That's good. Okay. So. Okay. Yes. So that is the 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 activity for today: making the rocket um, and okay. doing the measurements. Now remember. If you make your rocket, you can add the fins, you can decorate it, and you can take pictures or videos and send it to us, or you use the special hashtag um, to so that NASA can maybe pick it up. And remember, you can also try the other two, either of the other two 
uh, rockets, the one on the balloon, the balloon on the string, or using the fizzy rockets. Okay. And then remember, like before, let me go back to my thing. You know, if you do want to make uh, actual electronic, well, mm. I'm not sure if you make rockets, maybe robots and things, um, you can get in touch with Solomon. Hello. Yeah, just a moment, just a moment. Uh, so, that, those are our activities <laughs> for today. <laughs> We've gone to Mars. Mr. Solomon is colorless. You two are the first humans. First Ghanaians of Mars. Okay, 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 okay. That's hilarious. Now that's hilarious. Okay, okay. So, hold on. So, remember, uh, you've got the different activities you can do. So that's the hashtag, hashtag countdown to Mars. That's uh, if you have access, if you're allowed to have access to social media, if you're posting your photos, that's the hashtag you use, or you can send them to us and we can post them for you. And remember to look out the news on the 18th and 19th about the Perseverance rover. Remember, you can look up, find the moon on the 18th and the red dot you see close to it is Mars. So remember when you look at that red dot, if it's clear, you're able to see it, that imagine, you know, there's spacecraft orbiting um, Mars and there's a rover hopefully about to land on that evening. So that's exciting. Um, Sarah, can you hear me? Yes. I mean, can I everybody hear me? Yes. Yeah, so, um, so I think people have been asking what we have next week and then also on the 18th. So I think um, we will plan, perhaps we can do um, a live stream where our own live stream on our YouTube channel so people can join and any comments like yes, just like I mean how usually um, a live stream goes. So I don't know if it's possible we can do that because you guys are kids, we need monitoring also. So um, yeah, I mean we need somebody to monitor. So I think we would discuss and see if we could do something on the 18th or maybe you could just do a Zoom, a Zoom section and then yeah talk about yeah the whole London. Okay, well yes, we we can we can think about that, yes. But what we we're, we're going to do, I mean this this challenge, it's got five sections to it. So the last section is about landing. So it's learning all about landing. It's it's looking at the um they have this amazing thing they call the 7 minutes of terror as the spacecraft goes down through the very thin atmosphere of Mars. There's a lot of things that need to happen for it to land safely. Um, so it's talking all about that. And then you'll be making a lander. See if you can make something which can land something gently on the ground. Because again, that's what the NASA engineers have to do. They've got a spacecraft that's going thousands of kilometers an, an hour through space. And then they have to be able to slow it down enough so that when it lands on the planet, it doesn't completely destroy all the, all the hard work of all the scientists who've been putting together the rover and everything for all those years. So it's a, it's a, it's a very important part of the mission. So, so that's what's next week. Or we could, you know, we could do that or we could make next week's more of a, you know, question and answer and um, sort of a roundup of what we've done over the five weeks. We could be flexible. Yes, yes. Yeah, I, I think that's great. So we will think about it. Again, if you want to build um, cool rockets, I think um, maybe after the whole section, we would organize one section, um, maybe not with everybody, but you advertise it and you can join. Because there are several ways you could actually build cool or probably um, like proper rockets, I should say. You could do it with water, um, a water system or something like that. Mm -hmm. And there are some other cool ways you could build it. It's just the materials. And, and we know you guys don't have those various materials. That's why um, actually we have to do something you guys could all do at the same time. Um, however, we will think about people who really want to do um, pro probably like proper ones and, and yeah, so that everybody can have um, his own, their own share of like getting excited with this whole challenge. Yeah. So I think we have six minutes more, right? Yes. About. Yeah. yeah. So.
maybe we could do questions here. Yeah. Any question you have, you could either put it in the chat or perhaps raise up your hand and then we can allow you to ask your question. No. So I think I, I, we have crazy. Uh, so okay. you can go on, on mute. Did you guys say anything about the Mars River? It was part of our project that we are supposed to build. Last week. Oh, I didn't oh, you hear mean, that. Oh, you mean last week? Yeah. D uh, well, you're right. We didn't ask. We didn't ask people uh, to show us their rovers. But yes, that's a good point. So, did anybody make their Mars rover after last week's? Because mm -hmm. we'd love to see them. I made mine. Ah, fantastic. Wait, let me turn off this screen. But, but did did you try it with the rubber band to get it moving? The rubber band right here. Okay, okay. And now, but did it work? So when you wind it up, does it does it move? This is for T for nine one one. Oh, and there's another one there. Good, Aru. That's oh. nice. <laughs> well done, Kwesi and Aru. So we need the pictures. Send us the pictures. Yes. Okay. Was it anybody and, else did, managed to make a rover or the helicopter? Did you do anything else? Did you discover anything else with the helicopter, like trying to get it to go faster or uh, go in different directions? Anything like that? I so that was made your assignment. I still have made it into. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah I think um, so. Nicole, you could go on and ask your question. Nicole, are you there? Yes, sir. Yeah. What do we do next week? I'm kind of confused. He's on himself, but he's not talking. What do yeah. we do next week? I'm confused. Next week. So next next Saturday, there will be another session. Is what it the we... robot one? Hang on, hang on, hang on. Next Saturday, there will be another session. In theory, the, the next session is about landing. Because remember, we've, you know, this week we're talking about launching, but of course you actually have to land. So next week we'll be learning about how they land on Mars and all the different things you think about. And the activity is to make a lander, make, make something that can, you know, land. You, maybe you drop it from a height and, and you've got something inside and you have to make sure it lands without breaking. So that's... That's what we should be doing next week. Was just that Solomon and I will also discuss if we want to, uh, you know, add maybe a bit more question and answer and something like that. Because obviously by you know, Thursday, the Perseverance rover will have landed hopefully already. Uh, but it's just the way we timed it. We've got one session after the landing, but that's that's what we're doing. So there's, there'll be another session next Saturday with another activity. Yeah. Okay. Um. Do we have any more questions? Yes, uh, yes is that the Akas? Yeah. Um, okay, so you can go on. I can't really see you guys. Yeah. We can't hear you very well, the Akas. I, I, I can hear you saying something about the helicopter, but I can't hear it very well. Maybe you might have to put it in the chat. Okay. Any other questions or comments? We've got two, about two, only about two minutes. We've got two minutes left. So I should say that let, um, next week is the last section. So make sure yes. you join. Tell your friends. Everybody should join. Um, we don't know when we'll be organizing any more astronomy sections, but hopefully we would. Um, so make sure you join the last section. Bring all your questions and everything, okay? So A game next week. I believe this. Next week is the last one. Yeah, that's the, next week is the last session of this series. So this series of the NASA, NASA, NASA mission to Mars was, is a five-week series. 
So next week is the last one. Um, I'm yeah. sure we will do some more online sessions, but we, we haven't finalized when that will be. So yes, it's good if you all come next week. So bring all your questions, everything, yes. okay? Uh, could you like extend it over like three years or something? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! Because I am really enjoying this. I am so enjoying it. That's great. Well, we Thank you. Yeah, we would be happy to go as long as we can. But remember, um, there are plenty of resources you can use. So if we are not even there, you can still get to do that. Um, so yeah, so let's let's see how. No, this is the Thank thing you. Ever. We have one minute left. Yes. So the aqua says the helicopter we made, and um, when we put something heavy on the helicopter, it would move faster. Um, mm -hmm. So that's that. Very These good. sections are so fun. Thank I'm enjoying you. this. Um, yeah, so great, great comments. Okay. So thank right. you, everybody, because it's it'll be finishing very soon. So thanks, everybody, for coming along and for joining in and making your rockets. Remember, do do the experiments. See if you can make them go further uh, yeah, or be almost. more accurate. Please send us your photos and videos. Uh, and remember to look out on the 18th for the look for the moon and the, and mars close to it and maybe look for some news yeah and we'll we'll send out a message if we're gonna if we can organize something on the 18th we're not sure yet but we'll if, if something's gonna happen we'll send you a message okay oh, okay bye bye everybody okay, thank you everybody bye 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 four three two one bye 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 b